us. Very excited to have people from all over the world. Uh, again, I'm John Sade from Washington, D.C., and I just wanted to welcome, uh, it's actually my honor to uh, to welcome some very special speakers we have this morning. Um, I wanted to mention first that uh, actually Ilker uh, Tobku, Dr. Ilker Tobku has written us a note, he will not be able to make it because of last minute family situation, um, but uh, we will be in good hands, I'm sure. Um, the presentation uh, for this plenary session will be on HP in practice to promote collective decision making, um, which uh, is gonna be a very interesting topic. And I wanted to introduce uh, two uh, professors. Um, first, Dr. Uz Babro. Uh, holds the Arama Chair of Action Research at Sabanj University in Istanbul, Turkey, and is the founding manager of Arama Participatory Management Consulting since 1995, and they're also a sponsor for this conference, so we uh, thank him for that. Uh, he received his PhD in 1987 at the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania in Social System Sciences. Uh, as a lecturer, um, Dr. Beberol, uh has served in seven different universities and research institutes in different countries of the world. He specializes in transforming large-scale systems toward new generation models within the action research perspective and is published in the leading journals within this line of inquiry. His publications have appeared in journals such as the Journal of Action Research, Human Relations, Systems Practice and Action Research, and Organization Studies. Uh, largely on topics within the emory tris perspective. Since the 1980s, he has conducted many participatory methodologies in national and at the international level. Um, he has worked with organizations over 1,200 action research projects, ranging from large corporations to civil society institutions, governmental agencies, and municipalities, and has helped design three universities from the ground up, uh, and has set up about 15 corporate academies in Turkey, as well as in Europe, the United States, Russia, and the Middle East. So welcome, Dr. Babrol. And I would also like to um, introduce Dr. Oze Ozeydin. Um, uh, Dr. Ozeydin is Professor of Industrial Engineering Teaching, uh, decision, uh, Teaching Decision-Making, Entrepreneurship and Innovation, and Product and Process Development Courses in the Department of Industrial Engineering at Doge University. He is also the head of the incubation center at the same university. Dr. Ozeydin received his PhD in industrial engineering from Istanbul Technical University in 2012. His research areas include transportation and logistics, smart cities, multi-criteria decision-making. He has published journal articles in interfaces, transport policy, the European Journal of Operational Research, uh, Knowledge-Based Systems, International Journal of Fuzzy Systems, and Research and Transportation Economics. Uh, Dr. Zayden is the co-chair of SIG E1, Transportation System Analysis and Economic Evaluation at the World Conference on Transport Research, uh, Research Society. He is also a member of the MCDM Society, which is also a sponsor, and co-chaired the 25th International Conference on MCDM. So it's my distinct honor to uh, welcome both of these gentlemen, and I will hand it over to you. Uh, thank you very much. It's um, uh, it, it sounded pretty long to me. <laughs> uh, we are all already uh, late a little bit in terms of starting, uh, but I must um uh, give a little more uh, background uh, uh, just to uh, show my um, uh, kinship to, uh, at least social kinship to Professor Sati um, and, and the um, AHP community. Uh, I, I went to University of Sussex and studied applied sciences and operational research, uh, where I became quite familiar uh, with uh, uh, different kinds of methodologies, uh, work with Pat Rivet there. And then I went to University of Lancaster and work with Alan Mercer uh, for a year, where I met Stafford Beer, who said I had to go to Wharton, uh, to the Social System Sciences program, that was set up by uh, Russell Aikoff and Eric Trist uh, at the time, uh, which is 
I think round about the time uh, that Ras Ekov delivered his speech, the future of operation, operations research is past. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, I was a student at the P in the PhD program at Wharton in 1978, where I took a course from Tom Sati uh, and uh, spent a wonderful semester uh, with them um, uh, looking into uh, decision how to make uh, decision making uh, transparent and, and numerical, uh, which was uh, quite a joy. So uh, once um, I came back to Turkey, uh, I worked in the US for eight years, I don't want to give uh, there's enough background given there. So just uh, the connection back to my uh, home country. Um, uh, where I set up a, a company at the time, which was really a spin-off uh, uh, from the uh, university. And, and at the time, there are many uh, private universities in Turkey and still are, uh, and new ones are being founded every other year. Uh, so university ecology is, is very crowded. Uh, in fact, we're culpable for designing four, actually, um, the fourth uh, one is a Turkish Japanese university, uh, TJU, uh, that has been assisted by uh, University of Tokyo and TIT and Kyoto and and uh, the um, the imperial mostly imperial universities uh, of Japan. So that was also a very exciting period. It's just finished actually we just finished the strategic plan for that but this uh, community we've set up around arama which is uh, we like to call it participatory uh, management uh, consulting to depict the collective nature of everything that we do uh, i'm just showing you some pictures to uh, connect visually to the kinds of things that we're doing. Uh, Ilker and Ozai will also uh, give you some uh, pictures. The, um, the one on the top that has Vision 2025 in it, that was some seven years ago, um, shows you uh, what we call decision conference in practice, how we set people up, and uh, how they interact with the uh, with a screen uh, and there's a stage in front. The others come from what we call search conferences, uh, which is um, a participatory planning methodology founded by Eric Trist and Fred Emery. Um, it, this has already uh, been introduced quite a bit uh, by Dr. Sati. So uh, the kind of um, areas where we work in uh, can be described uh, as you see in the slide here, ranging from participative uh, strategic planning to innovation and collaborative uh, solutions and so on. Uh, but there are uh, three main concepts uh, that is behind every work we do is to triangulate and to blend um, novel, uh, novel ground, um, common ground, and what we call home ground. Uh, so we are definitely after uh, novel uh, visions uh, of the kinds of problem situations or, um, uh, or institutions, and um, we like to uh, bring people together through these methodologies, um, actually, uh, so that they can be aligned and uh, can act together. Um, uh, we call uh, this um, uh, collective thinking, collective generation and design, as well as uh, collective execution. So. Typically, when we're in a, an institution, uh, 
for instance, we are trying to help Borusan, which is one of the leading conglomerates in Turkey, uh, to uh, roll into another 100 years. They've been around for uh, about 100 years and uh, with nine different industries, industries underneath their uh, umbrella, uh, they want to continue uh, um, into another 100 years. Uh, and in this topsy-turvy -tur world of ours that is uh, ruled by hyperinflation, hyperregulation, uh, hyper taxes and hi uh, hyper everything um, competition for sure uh, that uh, that we call uh, Turkey. Um, this is remarkable uh, for a corporation to try and um, work on, uh, sustainably for its continuity. Um, and and there's uh, uh, these are. Uh, the kinds of clients that we have, almost always there is a home ground that we start from, and we are very uh, respectful to their ways and means. Uh, if it's um, an industrialist association, or if it's a women's organization, or if it's cybersecurity cluster, I'm just trying to remember some of the uh, institutions that we are working with right now. Uh, Turkey is uh, trying to design a fashion council uh, uh, for for Turkey, helping another university in Antep uh, to uh, develop a better positioning and so on. So always uh, respectful of what the home ground is. And we are um, very careful, in fact, sometimes we call it archaeology of uh, the the culture, the know-how, the knowledge, resident knowledge in that organization, uh, and uh, try to introduce enough mechanisms of innovation and novelty uh, to also find um, what is unique, uh, what can be uh, normatively and positionally a great value proposition for uh, the kind of institution. And because we're almost always in for at least a couple of years, sometimes 10 years, and the university I work for, I've been in now uh, for uh, th that I helped to, to design from scratch uh, for about 20, uh, 24 years. Uh, we have done five uh, rounds of these processes that we generally call action research. So, um, uh, you know, just to give you uh, some image of action research and operations research, and these are the kinds of worlds we're in and the toolkits that, that we have um, in, in order to formulate problems, in order to uh, mobilize uh, the folks uh, in a ubiquitous and a crisscross manner. So we are everywhere in the Turkish uh, uh, business and industrial environments, uh, educational and uh, governmental settings, uh, uh, always underlining what we call developing micro-democratization in a way that uh, you know advertisers would say below the line. So we don't work above the line uh, in terms of uh, representative uh, democracy circles, but above, uh, below the line, working with participatory uh, democracy uh, and ways of bringing that and and, and nurturing that. In, for that, we need to uh, sustain a process with different participatory conferences. And I'll show you just one uh, robust bundling that we've been using. And then I will finish uh, my introduction to our uh, plenary to our panel, uh, and and we almost always are um, uh, in a transformation or or another. Uh, those of you familiar with action research, its normative stand is to bring about the desirable future for all, not just for the ruling, not just for the top management, 
but certainly in with the stakeholders and with all the constituents of the uh, organizations at stake. Um, uh, for this, we have a PhD program actually, as well as a master's program that we launched this year, uh, where we have about 40 um, scholars and practitioners uh, all around the world. Uh, so it's a very animated uh, uh, program. Um, and um, uh, of course, our way of uh, developing uh, knowledge uh, is iterative and, and collective. So if we were to look at just one robust bundle, uh, just to give you an idea of how we're bundling action research and, and operations research, so to speak, and I'm using those terms broadly, uh, you, you folks are much more familiar uh, with uh, what has uh, become of operations research decision sciences and the like. And, and of course, I've shifted more into the 30 different varieties of action uh, research, uh, although my primary footing is with the Sociotechnical Design School of Fred Emery and, and Eric Trist. So if we look at this, this just gives you how to bundle. We start off with a search conference in general uh, because uh, this helps us to collectively design what is uh, desirable for the uh, the stakeholders uh, who we've been able to uh, bring into a two and a half day uh, workshop. Uh, this is uh, quite possible in Turkey, uh, which is what sets us really apart. We work with shareholders, um, government ministers, uh, and and um, uh, top level executives. It's not a problem to bring these people together uh, in a weekend. Uh, if there is any, um, uh, you know, knowledge advantage uh, that we have in our uh, top levels, uh, this is the one uh, that is very very important because. Uh, you know, work, working with Fiat Italy or or Noshkidro Norway uh, or uh, some retail chains in Russia and and the like in our neighborhood, uh, this is the fundamental um, uh, carving of time. Of course, a lot of things have changed during the pandemic, but many European leaders will never work in the weekend. Um, so. Maybe this is, Yoshi might tell us this is uh, very different in Japan, uh, which is an area I just started to mingle with. And uh, of course, uh, the, the collective ethics uh, of Japanese people and managers are uh, renowned. Uh, so these kinds of methodologies perhaps have made um, uh, its way, their way into uh, the organizations much more than we have been able to do in Turkey. Um, decision conference is, is what um, Özay is going to zero in. Um, and uh, and that's, the, that's where we use AHP. Um, and um, we have uh, either in a bundle or independently used AHP, if I'm not mistaken, around uh, uh, 150 some times in many different settings, including working with Galatasaray. For those of you who uh, are, uh, uh, you know, in vogue with the uh, the soccer uh, uh, world, um, that is one of the top soccer teams, football teams in Turkey. Um, so since we are in a few hours, actually in an hour and a half hopefully going to watch the the World Cup final. Uh, I don't know if you guys uh, knew that you were going to uh, clash uh, in terms of the time uh, time zone, uh, global time zone with the World Cup. Uh, it's quite a feat for you to compete with. But in any case, coming back to this, uh, we develop strategies in the search conference. We prioritize 
uh, those strategies uh, in a decision conference. And then we get folks to work on them for three to six months uh, and bring them into something that's called a commitment conference. This threesome, uh, 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 like the stations of a train uh, going from one location to another, and um, uh, it's been very, very helpful working at the industry or the national level. Also corporate level, but when it's a diffuse system with many stakeholders that who stand not in a hierarchical uh, way to each other, uh, this is uh, have have proven to be very useful. Uh, I have more, but I think in in all fairness to time and to the organizers and to my dear colleague Ozai Ozaiden, I should stop here and pass the buck to him. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you, Ojam. Uh, so I will I will move on from, from here and I'll try to be as efficient as, as he was. Uh, so I will start by sharing uh, Professor Ilkar's uh, slides. So uh, this section was designed to be a, a connection between uh, between the general uh, Arama principles and then uh, a case study which will which will come after this. Uh, so I will be explaining uh, the decision uh, conferencing uh, side side of things where Ikar was uh, was just going to ex explain. So it is. Uh, it is a method that we have been uh, implementing in in Turkey for uh, more than fifteen years with uh, Ozojam, but they were also doing this just before I, I even before I have joined them. So it is a way of the decision makers uh, getting together for discussions, and uh, and it's it's facilitated by the analysts and uh, group decision uh, su support processes. Uh, so, um, of course, the, the uh, facilitators might enter that judgment in the in the model here, the, because uh, the participants are not that might not be very familiar with that uh, with that. So, the, those facilitators play an important role in in these co conferences as well. Uh, and but in the end, everybody uh, focus on developing uh, like trying to find solutions to their uh, strategic uh, decision decision problems and uh, as our in, in the heart of all these decision conferences we are uh, we are using AHP which can help bring together a diverse group of uh, people with uh, totally different perspectives to uh, to make complex uh, complex decision makers so uh, as as you know, AHP offers a structured framework uh, for discussion and debate, and it, it enables a way to imp, imp, to uh, to implement to include the important intangibles of every uh, significant decision, together with, of course, the the, the tangibles uh, to to create uh, resolving uh, conflicts. Uh, this is a general layout of how we design these uh, these conferences. Generally, we uh, we hire a, a hall and we put together a couple of tables to include uh, different perspectives. Uh, sometimes Ozojam uh, just uh, shoots out people randomly to these assigned tables. Sometimes we do it uh, perspective wise. So. Uh, in different uh, in different conferences, we might have different types of setups, but generally, uh, this is the layout that we use. And as you see, in each table, we have a, we have a f facilitator aiding this uh, this this process. And uh, and we we use the general uh, principles. We start by criteria prioritization uh, through uh, pairwise comparisons, and then we do a, a project rating. Uh, where we ask uh, what is the contribution of each project or its its impact on a on a project uh, with respect to uh, the discussed criterion. Uh, so, and for the for the contribution of the of the projects, we use a 
uh, seven, uh, uh, sorry, uh, a five point scale and so with no impact, of course, we, we, we use a zero scale. So a zero to one scale, uh, we use to rate the, the projects. Just like an example, I will, uh, of course, I will be giving you uh, a more detailed example after this as a, as a case study, uh, but it will start by generally our main goal and then the, 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 the criteria, uh, that has been prepared, and then uh, we then rate uh, the, the projects. And then, the, of course, when the projects are rated, uh, we either uh, do a uh, predetermined number of projects, or we can select the projects uh, getting total points higher than a threshold, we can say, or find a breakpoint, uh, and uh, we see that the uh, is there a sudden drop, and depend, of course, this depends on the results, and uh, try to uh, group them together uh, as creating a, a result uh, for our study. So uh, we can have uh, different uh, different types of of these uh, these methods. Uh, we can apply them. So we have uh, applied these uh, this method, and we have done decision conferences for ministries, for municipalities, for provinces and districts for associations, uh, sports clubs, just like uh, <laughs> Professor said for Galatasaray, we did it, and for conglomerates, for corporations, companies, foundations, universities. So it's been uh, it's been applied in a variety uh, variety of fields and uh, and the topics were of course discussing the law system, international relations, electronic appliances, paper products. So uh, it has been uh, quite uh, quite diverse, and actually, I I really enjoy all of these uh, these processes and dealing with different uh, areas. Always uh, is a is a teaching process uh, for ourselves as as well. Uh, so that part was actually Ilker's side, and I will immediately move on to the to our one of the case uh, case studies uh the examples that we are going to dive in in detail okay let me just share oh sorry <laughs> yes okay this part would be of course where i would be <laughs> saying hello to uh, but now you're accustomed to 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 my way of uh, presenting. Uh, so we're now uh, we will be talking about our application of of a decision conference as a strategic transformation of the Topkapi Palace Museum. Uh, so I don't know if anyone has been in in Turkey, visited Turkey, or plan to visit Turkey. So this is one of the top. Uh, top locations to visit. And by the way, normally in, in my background, I also put this photo. And uh, personally, I like technology a lot and I like photography a lot. The, this is an actual photo that I took uh, with a drone of mine uh, before there were uh, very strict regulations uh, <laughs> based <laughs> to, to the drones. Now it is, uh, you have to get a, a lot of approvals in order to take this photo, but this was a time uh, before that. So I, I managed to take this photo uh, on my own. So copyright to me. So no, no problems on, on that. Uh, to start, uh, to give you uh, the importance of this uh, study, uh, I have looked into some uh, statistics. We have looked into some statistics and uh, started by looking at United Nations World Tourism Organization. They estimate that the tourism, cultural to, uh, heritage tourism accounts for 40% of all international tourism. And museums in that sense uh, play a real important role because uh, as described is a place where uh, objects of uh, historical, cultural, or uh, scientific, scientific interests are uh, exhibited, exhibited. And museums, of course, can be public, private, and uh, can just focus on specific area or, or study or collection. And uh, 
they are used for, uh, of course, uh, preserving and sharing items of cultural or uh, historical uh, significance. Also, uh, they have they they play great important role for providing a way of for people uh, to learn the history and culture of a place or a group of people, and they help uh, to preserve those objects within that significance so they can be enjoyed uh, in in future generations and. Uh, they serve as centers of research, providing a place for scholars and students to learn and, and study. And they play a they also play a role in promoting cultural understanding and dialogue, because as they provide a space where people from different backgrounds can come together to learn and appreciate different perspectives. So in that sense, we can uh, we can strongly say that. Uh, museums have have a have a great importance in our in our uh, in our lives, and then we can come to Turkey. So uh, this part will be a little bit of uh, this could be uh, sponsored by Ministry of Tourism for Turkey, maybe I don't know, but uh, I, I'm just going to talk about a little bit of Turkey's cultural heritage. Uh, so. Uh, we have a rich and, and diverse cultural heritage with influences from many different civilizations uh, on these lands uh, over the centuries. And uh, some of the most important and well-known aspects of Turkey's cultural heritage, of course, it's uh, we, we can see it in ancient uh, ruins and archaeological sites such as the city of Ephesus or the temple of Artemis. But also we are known for its vibrant and colorful traditional arts and crafts, such as pottery, textiles, and, and carpets. And we also have a rich culinary heritage with a variety of delicious and unique dishes that are famous around the world. And uh, also we, we are home to a number of uh, religious sites such as the Blue Mosque, uh, Hagia Sophia, uh, of course, they they not only have a cultural significance, but also an architectural beauty. And we are home to eighteen UNESCO heritage sites, which are which are just distributed all uh, through, throughout the whole uh, Turkey. And uh, the, this cultural richness, of course, comes from. Uh, different civilizations that have lived in Turkey, from the Hittites to the uh, Perigians and Lydians, and of course, uh, in the end, which I'm going to come to, is the Ottoman Empire, which ruled over much of the region for hundreds of years and uh, left a, a long-lasting cultural and architectural uh, legacy. And as you can see, the Ottoman Empire uh, was one of the largest and most powerful empires in, in history. And uh, during their reign, of course, uh, they have provided significant contributions to arts, architecture, literature, and, and science. So uh, preserving and reflecting that uh, play an important role. And the Topkapı Palace, uh, today's main topic, uh, who will come to that because it was the primary residence of the Ottomans of, uh, of sultans and their court and was built in uh, the 15th century and was the head of the throne uh, for, for many, many years before uh, the main palace was moved to Dolmabahce Palace, which was, of course, in the, in the decline uh, season. But uh, Topkapı Palace was uh, the center of Ottoman Empire when they were ruling, uh, when they were flourishing. Uh, so as you can see, it, it, is, it is a testament to a grandeur and splendor of Ottoman Empire with its beautiful gardens and rich collection of, uh, of art. Uh, so uh, when the task for uh, transforming this uh, museum uh, Professor Barbarolo will also join me in, in that. Uh, I think it was it was not only a privilege, but it was a, a, a really important duty duty for us as well. So we uh, in in this uh, decision conference, it was implemented in three stages. Of course, uh, the first stage would be understanding the problem on hand, 
and its elements. So what was going uh, wrong and what could be made uh, made better. So that that was the first uh, step in our, in our framework. And then uh, the second phase was the prioritization of the criteria with respect to the aforementioned goal. And, and third and finally, it was the rating of alternatives with respect to the related uh, criteria. So we use this uh, three-stage uh, methodology. And uh, in the previous presentation, uh, you remember we had multiple tables uh, showing us different perspectives. We had five different perspectives, members uh, that are rep re representing these five different perspectives uh, when, when deciding on this. So uh, five different study groups were created, uh, of course, regarding their area of expertise. Uh, and each group is expected, was expected to evaluate the project alternatives with respect to their own perspective. Okay, so the perspectives of working groups according to the dimensions of the basic approach of modern museum functions were summed as collection, protection, exhibition, communication, and, and, uh, and education. So let's come to our uh, decision model. So we had the main goal of the main objective is to select the best alternative for transformation of Topkapı Palace Museum by focusing on palace functions and uh, considering its status in the Ottoman Empire as a point of inspiration that would result in reduction of the detriment of the building and misinterpretation of it. So that uh, was the main goal. That was our uh, working stone uh, where, where every other decision or uh, every other evaluation was based on. And then we uh, had nine criteria. Uh, the first one was maintenance and preservation, exhibiting and good storytelling, satisfaction, optimizing required resources, attraction center, security, applicability, integrated approach, and efficient use of the areas for uh, basic museum functions. I'll rapidly go through these, uh, like explaining these, uh, these criteria. So uh, the first criterion we used was maintenance and preservation, uh, which is accepted as one of the main roles of museums. So it was, uh, it was uh, very uh, basic and uh, it should, it was consisting of two separate topics, maintaining and, maintaining and preserving the palace itself. Is Perhaps yeah. you, you might like to go over these criteria somewhat quicker than you intended yeah. uh, in, in view of the fact that we might get some questions maybe. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, our second uh, criterion was exhibiting and, and good storytelling uh, because it uh, one of the roles of museums is to satisfy a, a good atmosphere. And uh, then, Evaluating that satisfaction, that that not only the the customer uh, like the the visitor satisfaction, we included uh, satisfaction criterion. Uh, then, of course, money money rules everything. Uh, so, especially this was also a museum under the administration of the government. So we have to be uh, using those uh, resources. Uh, optimally, so one criterion was re re regarding to that, and then uh, one of them was one of the goals. Actually, sub goals was becoming an attraction center or not. So we did, we evaluated the projects uh, based on uh, based on these, and of course every uh, risk uh, the every major project should include uh, some type of risk management, we, which we. Uh, collected under uh, security criterion. We also had a, had applicability, which is very understandable and and self-explanatory. Some some criterions are uh, are like that. And we had uh, two more cr criteria left. One is integrated approach, and the the last one is the efficient use of the areas for basic museum functions because it is. Uh, it is confronted by the scarcity of available exhibition areas because the area is limited. So using uh, using the areas efficiently 
uh, play a, play an important role. And to evaluate the so these were the criteria, and then we had twelve uh, projects that were discussed, and uh, of course after some uh, eliminations and filtering, we we were we ended up with uh, twelve projects. So those twelve projects, of course, the ideal situation would be uh, implementing all of them. But we don't have not the not the money, not the time, or or the workforce to to evaluate all of them. So we had to do a certain uh, prioritization. Uh, so the uh, the results when we uh, collect, so every uh, perspective was working on their uh, parts. So they were thinking of uh, of their perspectives only. But in the end, of course, when we collect and uh, make a group decision out of them. Uh, the results turned out to be uh, maintenance and preservation uh, was the most important criterion. Then came the integrated approach. Then came the security and risk management. But also we, we like dissecting these and taking a look at uh, which uh, perspective contributed to, to which area. So we, we generally look at uh, the results as you see, so the, the colors represent the different uh, perspectives, and the gray in, in the behind is the, is our general uh, aggregated uh, results. Uh, so protection uh, perspective played an important role in, in increasing the, the location of the integrated approach. So we can get, a, get an opinion and we can uh, generate some lessons out of how these different uh, perspectives uh, played an important role. So in those decision conferences, after the evaluation of the criteria, we also give the microphone to each perspective to sort of defend their uh, their perspectives. Their, their, rating, their decisions. Yeah, their decisions. So, so explain uh, uh, their decisions. So this, this also so this also contributes to to uh to mit not mitigating but uh we can say that uh, a collective mind so that people would also understand how they how they thought and why they uh, responded in a certain way uh so it contributes to our uh collaborative uh, decision making uh, efforts quite well so it's actually a very important phase in 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 the decision conferences as well and in the end we, we also uh, do the same thing in the second part of the decision conference and uh, where the uh, projects are rated and we, we order them to, to, of course, their uh, role of importance and take a look at uh, who decided or who contributed to that, uh, that type of decision. So here, in, in our case, area management plan uh, came out first in the, in our aggregated results was also the first for uh, two of the two of the perspectives and when we look at the numbers of course in order to do to a sensitivity uh, analysis of that uh, we grouped these instead of saying that area management plan was the was the first was the most important we say that the group of these uh, five criteria uh, five per, uh, projects turn out to be the 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 first degree of importance and then the, the second three three group of three were the second important and the remaining four uh, was the uh, was the uh, we can say sort of least important in that sense of course we create we generate some charts to to see the the changes and discrepancies in different uh, perspectives how they have uh, how they have responded but this creates as i told you uh, some type of uh, sensitivity study, and uh, we 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 look at how different perspectives uh, contributed to our final decision. So, okay. So thank you. Uh, that was a, a rapid part. Uh, I I've, I will be putting these slides and on on this website. Uh, you can check there, and you can like contact me or Professor Babirolo or uh, Professor Ikar uh, and and uh, come up with follow up questions even if uh, after the the conference as well. Uh, so thank you. 
Thank you very much. Um, really interesting. Actually, I've been there. Uh, fantastic place. So um, any questions uh, on the presentations? I maybe don't have a question. I just wanted to thank Jose for it. really a, a great reminder of what it's like in Turkey. It's a beautiful country. Tom and I were there a few times. Uh, I want to say about the Topkapi uh, Palace, the people that live there, the sultans, must have had many of the same concerns that you talk about. Like they had to dis they had to keep the place up, they had to keep it secure, mm -hmm. they had to worry about where the cooking was done, uh, all these things. And I've also known that the um, the empire they were the greatest managers of their time. They really knew how to run things. So um, I think that your uh, presentation here is maybe an example. You're still doing it, doing very well. <laughs> Except yeah, they, maybe, didn't maybe, they, they, they didn't were also thrown. having their type of, of decision, uh, decision conferences with it, of course, with their advisors and... <laughs> Uh, I, I, I sorry, have, sorry, go ahead, Enrique. Yep. Yeah, I have a question. Well, first of all, uh, well, I've also been lucky to be at uh, the Top Capi Palace. It's amazing. And now I believe that uh, tying AHP with Top Capi, now we are famous, you know, for <laughs> forever. <laughs> yeah. um, my question is, I, I can imagine the complexity of a public uh, project because uh, there is a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, in public projects, in particular something so visible as Topkapi, there must be different stakeholders, points of view, politics. Uh, in this type of huge uh, public project, what, what is the major um, uh, challenges that uh, that you think uh, uh, you you face to the most difficult part, which uh, is different from any other? Excellent thing? question. Can I respond to that, Ozai? Of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, typically the way these projects are generated uh, is through some decision maker uh, being in one of our previous projects. Uh, so when you implement these uh, kinds of methodologies about 1,700 times in a period of about 20, 25 years, uh, you create a kind of network that um, there is high level of awareness uh, about these methodologies. Yes, in the decision uh, enchelons of Turkey, AHP is probably better known than many other top level decision enchelons of different uh, countries for this particular reason. Um, uh, coming to your question, uh, with all participatory methodologies, the challenge is to bring the system into the room. Um, so uh, we we like to uh, uh, we like these kind of conference bundles to create um, different uh, ways of knocking heads together, uh, so that we. Uh, can access uh, different uh, bodies of knowledge, different levels of expertise, or different um, authorities uh, to make decisions about the constituent system. So uh, stakeholder mapping and um, assessing and analyzing in order to determine who should be invited where is absolutely the biggest challenge and to be able to bring them into the room. Now with the pandemic, we were uh, one of the first to implement, to use Zoom uh, in, in, in our university and perhaps in Turkey because Zoom really uh, improved phenomenally uh, from the first time we used to the uh, to these days, uh, all different kinds of functions and so on. Uh, so um, we very quickly uh, started to do hybrid conferences. 
uh, which increase the level of participation of the most relevant uh, stakeholders into the uh, collective decision-making processes. So let me stop there. There are a number of other challenges uh, of, um, you know, especially with using a rating or a pairing, the different comparison and the different uh, rating uh, systems and explaining it to um, novices, uh, people who've not used these kinds of uh, uh, mechanisms in their decision making. Uh, they just like to use one criteria, finance or, or you know, applicability or something that they have always used. Uh, that's perhaps the next uh, prime uh, challenge of bringing people into a quantitative setting. Uh, sometimes we use the analogy with opinion polls, uh, but informed opinion polls with the experts present in each group, et cetera, et cetera. There is a lot of detail of how we actually run these uh, conferences with AHP operating as the main um, tool. Um, but let me, let, let's get Birsen's uh, yeah. question or comment. Uh, she has yeah. her hand up uh, and maybe I'll have time for another shot. Or, mm -hmm. or Uzai, please. Yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, actually, uh, mine is not a question, but I remember attending your Arama conference. I know it was before 1998 because I lost my sister in 1998. So this is a reference point. And when I attended, I just thought this should reach out much more people. So when we had this conference, I said, no, this is the opportunity now. So this is how we did it. And in 1998, we had another important event. We organized MCDM meeting. And in this meeting, uh, Tom Sate, of course, uh, introduced AHP AMP. And he did a, a, a seminar for, uh, for practitioners. I think there, are, there were maybe 500 practitioners from industry. And you were one of them, I think, in that conference. And my sister was there as well, uh, as a businesswoman. And she didn't know English. But she and uh, Tom started doing all these uh, comparisons, et cetera. She was the one always answering the, and there was interpreter, <laughs> of course. And when she learned it, she just said, oh, every, every business should use this one, this is methodology. Unfortunately, uh, we lost her in 1998, a few months after this uh, conference. So she couldn't realize this. I just wanted to reflect upon this. I have right. some questions, but I do, I think we are only we exceeded two minutes of our time. We are very, uh, it is <laughs> very yeah. Yeah, on time. Yeah. Okay, so if somebody else has some questions, I, I have you know, one more it, question. Yeah, uh, uh, it's not a question, but uh, was, uh, you were there in social system sciences just after I left. Oh. Uh, Seventy nine, when Tom and uh, Tom moved to Pittsburgh, I moved with him. So, so I'm glad to see a, a fellow graduate from the same program. Oh, all right. They, you know, we uh, uh, there is a um, I think either a Facebook group or or uh, or LinkedIn group for Escubers. Yes. If you're not connected, please uh, uh, hook in. Okay. Uh, and and. Um, of course, there are uh, a number of meetings. Uh, there was one to commemorate um, Russ Aikoff's 100th birthday. Um, uh, just before the pandemic, we were all in Philadelphia. So uh, I will put my uh, email in the chat okay. uh, and hope that we, we, we stay connected uh, from now on. Uh, lovely definitely, definitely. to see you. The uh, fact that you mentioned that famous paper of Raza Lake of saying the old original research is dead. That was when I just arrived in the US in 1975. I thought I was going to learn operational research and I arrived there and he says he's dead already. What am I doing here, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was, a, he, he, he was a, quite a character, right? Uh, which made life somewhat difficult for his co workers uh, yeah. and, and, and us. 
Uh, uh, Tom, you have a privilege. I, you know, Tom was always together with the students and delightful, and Russell was always challenging us with his famous statement, you have a misconception. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I did. The, I did take his doctoral seminar. I remember that uh, it was very interesting. He was. He had a prodigious memory. If I remember, he could read every, everything he wrote. He remembered, but he wasn't reading it. He was. He just remember it. It was amazing. I just anyway. You know, very well, nice to see you. By the way, thank you. We're a little over time, but thank you very much. Uh, you very much. Wonderful Thanks presentation, so and we'll continue the conference in uh, after the break. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. You, Merry Christmas, Thank everybody. Merry Christmas. Thank Thank you. Thank you. See yeah. you all. Thank you. Hopefully Thank you. in person soon. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye.